you'll know his work from Netflix's Love in the Villa, Fox's Empire, um, the Blade Runner Revelations VR game, and of course, Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures TV show and this Smuggler's Run experience at Disney's Parks Galaxy Edge as well. Um, welcome to, to the show, Venetius. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us here on Father Tracks to sort of discuss your career and, and your work on Star Wars and everything else. And um, great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Yeah. Um, just wanted to start um, by discussing how you got into composing. Why did you sort of choose that as a career? And yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I I would say, uh, for me, music was kind of part of my life ever since I was a kid. So I I was born and raised in Brazil, and uh, while I was there. My father, who was not a professional musician, but was a music enthusiast, he always had music around the house. Um, you know, he played guitar, he played piano, and not only did he like music, but he also loved movies. And so uh, we were always listening to soundtracks from from the movies that he liked. We listened to a lot of John Williams, a lot of a lot of Star Wars music, but a lot of music from other movies too. And I think early on that kind of planted a seed for me where um, where music was to me kind of a, a place of comfort. It was a place that that I kind of kept coming back to for for various reasons. And so it it didn't take too long for me to start you know learning it seriously and and kind of studying it formally. And then I realized that I, I I wanted to kind of join those two things, music and movies together. And that's that's what I wanted to do as a career. And uh, I had never met anyone who had done that, but I knew that it was a it was a possibility. So so that's kind of what what then in my in my late teenage years, that's what made me move away from Brazil and move to the United States to pursue an education, first of all, in, in film scoring, so that, which means, you know, writing music for movies. And then after finishing that education, I, um, I moved down to, I moved to Los Angeles where I live now. And I've been, I've been at it ever since. Yeah. It was a sort of the renowned um, Berkeley College of Music that um, you attended, I think. I'm That's right correct. Say. Yeah. Was it important to you to find the right school? Um, yeah, very important. Uh, I think it, also the the fact that at least during my time, if I if I remember correctly, Berkeley College of Music was the was the only school that offered an undergraduate degree in film scoring. I think other schools at the time offered uh, you know master's degrees and PhDs and so on in that subject, but but Berkeley, to my knowledge, was the only the only school that offered an undergrad. So. It was kind of like if I if I wanted to study this, I, it had to be at Berkeley, and and plus I had a lot of um, a lot of my music mentors in Brazil were always telling me that 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 was a good place to to go and learn because you know there were there were very talented professors there that that would be really helpful for you know kind of teaching me the ropes of of everything related to music. So yeah, it was it was extremely important to 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 me at least to to be able to go there. Yeah, uh, having got sort of gone through that experience and entered the industry and, and worked in different um, genres within the industry as well, is there some advice you would give someone that's maybe thinking about um, a career in composing? Mm. Um, yeah, that's a great you... question. That's a great question. Uh, I would say there's there's a few there's a few a few different pieces of advice of course it, it depends kind of on, on on where where you're at you know in your in your musical journey and your professional career but i would say that as I, i'm i'm a huge proponent for education so so if if people if people are able to go onto that path i highly recommend it if you're able to you know study music before you go to college um you know, either by taking private lessons or enrolling in some kind of an after-school program, uh, and then if you're if you're actually able to go to college to study music, I think that's hugely beneficial. But I think maybe even more than that is just start, you know, start start working on it. Start uh, 
finding people that are, you know, maybe making student films or, or making independent video games or things like that, start trying to connect with those people. You know, maybe, maybe there are local things where you're from or, or now with, with the internet it's so easy to find uh, people who are creating things, try to connect with them and, and see if you can, if you can write some music for them. I feel like that is, that's such a strong learning experience that it, it can already kind of take you to some new, new levels in your expertise about it, even even if you're just starting out. Yeah. Um, for those of us that um, have never sort of worked in this sort of field of television, film, um, can you tell us a little bit about the creative process, um, the genesis of a new project? Because obviously you're going to be working with um, potentially the writers, directors, producers, uh, all sorts of creative nowadays on on a production um, I've just wondered what's involved in sort of taking their initial vision um, to life and um, you given that the the musical cues and, and uh, music such a vital part of storytelling as well yeah yeah and, and I think you 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 put it very well uh, when you said that it's about taking or bringing their vision to life right and, and bringing the vision of of a director or or the producers of a, of a particular project so to, to me, it's extremely exciting because um, I think that when you're, when you're talking about, you know, TV or films or video games, what it boils down to at the end of the day, I think, is storytelling. I think everyone who's approaching, you know, everyone who's working on a production, whether you're a composer or you're a sound designer or you're a director or an actor or a voice actor or a cinematographer, um, what you're trying to do is to tell the story, you know, using your own means. And music is no different uh, than than these other mediums in that way. Um, but then, of course, music has has some specific things about it. So usually, uh, as a composer, I'll I'll come in at a project, sort of in the last third of of a project. You know, if you're talking about a movie, for example, movies take kind of a long time to get made. And, you know, people will spend some time writing, writing the script and kind of figuring out the story. And then you go and you shoot it and you and you, uh, well, yeah, the, sh the shooting process takes a long time. And then when you're done shooting and you start editing the movie and and kind of bringing in, you know, sound effects and visual effects and so on, that's when music usually comes comes in. Um, and usually for a composer, you'll you'll have a conversation with the director or a series of conversations to try to get to the heart of the story and see how I can translate that with music. And so that to me is one of the most exciting parts is just figuring out, you know, what, how can I, how can I enhance this story using music? You know, how can I write themes for different characters or, you know, under kind of help the audience make sense of the story using different musical cues and so on. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, without getting too too in depth, that's that's sort of the the overview of the process. Yeah, and I think many of us have seen um, directors comment about you know in the editing room, it's like they're making an entirely new film. I'm mm -hmm. guessing it can be a similar process when you take a piece of music and it can maybe change how they want to focus on a particular scene and uh, the emphasis on a particular scene as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think if you, you know, it's funny, I was just talking to a friend of mine recently. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched the throne room from from the throne room scene from uh, from the from Star Wars A New Hope without music that, you know, that that last scene. If you watch that without music, it's kind of like the scene doesn't really work. Yeah. You know, and then when you put the music in, of course, it's beautiful and regal and and, you know, heroic and so on. Uh, and it's, it just goes to show you how impactful a piece of music can be in, in a scene. And it can, it really can, it can, it can totally shift the mood of a scene. You know, it can, a scene that maybe was intended to be comedic can then become sad or it can become scary. You know, uh, it's, it's really interesting how that, that kind of juxtaposition of music and images can, can play with our imagination and with the way that we that we perceive what we what we're watching so i that's another 
one of the the really exciting parts about about writing music for me is how much you can change the perception of a scene yeah and um, we kind of discussed this sort of the collaborative kind of element of it and i wondered um the effect when you when you work on sort of iconic franchises like star wars like blade runner where um musical themes are already heavily established and so familiar to people um how do you bring in sort of your own sort of creative touch to that kind of mm -hmm. universes so um as well as sort of honoring the sort of the past musical themes yeah. and able to um influence it and um especially with um the duration of time on that have, these franchises have been around there's um changes in tastes of music as well mm -hmm. yeah that's and that's a that's a uh an important consideration when you're working on something that has such a deep pre-established canon right like like star wars um I, I usually find that there are kind of two the you're you're either operating from one of two approaches um you usually you'll have the producers and directors desiring to stay within the world of of what people are accustomed to in, a, in that particular show or, or or series or movie um and when that's the case you kind of keep it a little more subdued and sort of learn how uh how music has been used in that you know for that series of stories um or the other approach is to kind of do some do a different spin or something completely different in which case then you you kind of try to find ways to make the music work and to to just kind of have it uh uh you know adding your creative spin to it and and going a different direction it's it, it can be very tricky though because um I, uh, you, you, sometimes you might have an urge to do something completely different, but you, you, you're, uh, there, there are certain, certain confines, you know, of, of the story that you want to stay within. So it's, it's, it, it's not always the case that you're, that you're able to add a creative spin on it or something completely different which which is normal it's kind of part it, it's part of the part of the job is to be able to adapt yourself to the different you know different projects that you come in even if you don't get a chance to exactly put your your fingerprint on it um i like to think that just by just because of the fact that that you know if i'm being brought into a project to compose music just the way that I interpret the stories, the way that the way that I'll choose to put music or not put music here and so on, that it will kind of go through my filter anyway, and some of my voice will inevitably come in. So that's usually my hope is that whichever approach we take, that um, that my my musical taste ends up ends up being imprinted in the score regardless. So that's that's what I hope, and I, and and I hope people are able to connect with that, and that that kind of creates a cohesive thing at the end of the day. Yeah. So when you get like a a project like um, Blade Runner Revelations, a video game, and it's kind of bridging the gap between the original film and Blade Runner twenty forty nine, um, do you try to um, foreshadow what's coming in in the in the new film in terms of the music, or is it is that a case of you feel you're able to, to pull from both films in order to try and um, find a balance or is it do you want to find something quite unique yourself mm -hmm, that's a good question so so for that for that game i didn't write the music but i edited the music that was written for it okay um, and i think i would say that in general all the creatives that were working on that game were were pretty much trying to just emulate the like just the 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 quintessential Blade Runner experience. So I don't think I don't think people were trying to go too far off from from what you're used to seeing in Blade Runner, because it, you know because it was a VR game, it was kind of all about immersion. And so I, I think it was about trying to trying to get the player to go into the world that you've that you've gotten used to seeing on the screen, you know, on, on in the movies. So. Um, in in that way, I think the the I would say the style of the music was very much, you know, kind of classic Blade Runner. But then, in, you know, it, it, in many ways, I, I could see uh, 
uh, uh, the, you know, the music kind of taking you one direction or another while you're, while you're doing the investigations and so on. So that, that was a fun part of it that, that, you know, the, the music could g give you a few hints, a few cues of, of, or clues rather of, you know, what direction you were supposed to go within the game. Um, you mentioned that it's a VR game, it's an immersive game. Um, does that change um, the sort of how the music's um, thought of um, when when you're composing it? Um, just thinking because it's still quite a new medium, I guess. VR is still something that's being explored. Still, sort of, people are still trying to find just the rules, if so to speak. Yeah. Is it, the fact that it's it's designed to be an immersive experience is it is it does it change how you approach? And bringing the music together for that, I would say I would say it does um, because you know differently than a movie, uh, a, a VR experience will be will be experienced in a different way by the by the audience, right? So you know you'll you'll have a VR set and it's kind of like you're you're inside of that world. So um, I think being aware of that when you're writing the music already already changes kind of some some of the creative decisions that you'll make. So I would definitely say it 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 changes a little bit of the creative process. At the end of the day, you're still you're still doing you know kind of what I like to call musical storytelling. You're still trying to tell a story with music, but um, but there is a difference just by just because of the way that the audience is experiencing it. In in the end of the day, so that's that I I would say it changes a little bit of your of your creative approach. Um. You've worked sort of different mediums, with um, television, sort of um, live experiences like uh, Smugglers Run, video games, and so on. Um, I'm guessing the approach you take will differ from as the projects differ. You know, like like in a movie where it's it's very linear, one storyline. When a video game, it's not so linear that you 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 know the, the the player could take the game in any kind of direction and the music still kind of has to fit. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the approaches you take to um, different mediums? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think you, you, you nailed it there when you're talking about um, the, the main difference I think between, you know, something like a movie and something like a video game is the way the audience will experience it. Right. So in a movie, you mentioned it's a, it's a linear piece of media. So, that means that when you when you hit play on that movie, it will play out a certain way. If you go back and play it again, it will always play the same way. So, um, so there's only one way for the audience to experience that. So that that entails a certain kind of creative process and a certain kind of even technical, you know, file deliveries and so on. Uh, but when you're when you're talking about a video game, things change a little bit because you you know if you're playing a particular game let's say you're playing a you know an action adventure game or something and you you're faced with a decision to either engage a a group of enemies or try to sneak past them that's two ways already that you can two different ways that you can complete that particular level and with video games it's all about having the music sort of tailor the experience as the player goes on and that's that's pretty fascinating to me that we have the technology to be able to do that. So, um, so you'll you'll write music kind of differently. You know, you'll, for example, in a, in a situation I described, if you have a player uh, deciding whether to engage the the enemies or or sort of sneak past them, if if they do engage and they go into like a battle mode, for example, you'll probably want something. You'll probably want the music to change there. You know, the music to get to get heavier to put per, you know for percussion to come in or brass or something like that. So that the player can really feel like the stakes are raised and there's a battle going on, but if they if they were to not engage with that group of enemies, then the music the music should probably you know stay a little bit more still, a little bit a little bit more sneaky. You know what I mean? So it's that that's one of the exciting differences is in in video games you can really tailor the the kind of real time experience of the player. And in movies, you 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 will tailor that too, but it's, but it's, there's only one option, yeah. right, for for how to watch that. So those are the main differences, I would say. Um, you've had success as well in your career as well in terms of um, awards from the industry. I think you, you were Emmy nominated for Google Cody um, Carson, 
Um, That's correct. How, how did that um, feel to see that kind of recognition from your peers? Oh, it was it was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, it it was kind of it was it was a little unexpected for me, um, because I've been I've just been at it for for kind of a short time, and of course, as a as a creative, these are kind of the things that you dream about, you know, being nominated for something like this, and I was fortunate to to have that happen early on in my career. Uh, and it was fantastic. It was, you know, I think I've, I've said this in a, in a different interview before, but, um, the, the industry kind of the, you know, the, the creative industry, when you first come in, it can be, and I imagine that's kind of with any industry, it can be a little bit intimidating. You know, there's all these big names, all these really talented people, uh, that, that are, you know, kind of these giants walking the earth. And um, receiving recognition like this, it, it makes it a little bit more familiar. You know, it, it, it just makes me feel like I belong a little bit more. So um, in that way, I think that it, it was almost a, a, um, like a, a relief for me, you know, because now it's like, okay, now I can, now, now I can hang out here and, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I could be one of the cool kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you also, you get a great night out to the Emmys as well, I'm sure. So, say that again, sorry? You, you get a great night out at the Emmys as well. So, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, so so the way this Emmy nomination worked is that uh, I I was nominated after after the 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 event had already happened because uh, okay. there was there was a mix up with the with the the credits. And then I, I was nominated after the fact, so I didn't get to go to the to the actual uh, event. But you know, there's there's always the next one, and hopefully, the next one. I'll get to be there. <laughs> in the Star Wars galaxy, adventure awaits in a thrilling new series of shorts. So team up with your friends. Are you sure this thing is safe? Grab your lightsaber. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. Fix your starship. How's this? Use the Force. Um, moving on to uh, your work on Star Wars. Um, you worked on Star Wars Galaxy Adventures, which um, was a highly um, praised uh, animation series. Um, I think really the fan base really gotten it a chance to um revisit everyone's favorite characters whoever whatever character you loved and um and a completely different medium than i think they'd been seen before um you worked under the composer ryan shore um as scoring coordinator can you sort of explain a little bit about that role yeah absolutely uh so so yeah so uh i like you mentioned i worked on that on that show under under ryan shore who's been really a, a great mentor to me in the in the the world of composing and and now I, i'm fortunate to call him a, a, a friend of mine um so he was the main composer for this for the series and i and as a scoring coordinator i was technically I'm, I'm part of his team you know and so um i'm trying to help him out with with creative things or helping help him out with all of the all of the things that are that are involved in creating the score for for a, a production like that. So, um, it, you end up wearing a bunch of different hats as a as a quote unquote scoring coordinator. So, sometimes you're doing more creative things, you know, like editing music or or uh, you know doing various kind of creative tasks. Other times you're just making sure that you know that we're all on schedule to to finish things in the time that that things are scheduled to finish so that that's kind of one of the fun parts about it is that you get to to wear these different hats you know within a, a particular production and um i think it ran 54 episodes and um it was kind of a reimagination of different elements from the different films and uh, shows um re-exploring um scenes with characters so you got to explore a lot of um classic musical scores and then start um, to be able to tweak them and sort of make them a little bit more unique and um, for the show. Yeah. So, so, and, and that was that I, I thought that was such a fun concept for uh, the, the concept of galaxy of adventures, because of course I, I grew up on, 
I grew up watching Star Wars movies. You know, um, I'm a I'm a child of the '90s, so so when I was a kid, I was watching. Uh, that's when the the prequels were coming out. So I remember going to the theater and seeing them. But uh, for I think the purpose of this of this series of Galaxy of Adventures was to kind of introduce that older uh, world of Star Wars. So so the prequels and the original trilogy, especially to to some of the kids that that didn't grow up watching them. And so uh, in that way, it was hugely exciting because they're they're just kind of, you know, they were recreating some of the most famous scenes and some of our, some of our favorite moments. Uh, from the movies, they were recreating that with animation, and of course, that also means that you're you're either recreating or re-editing the music that was that was originally in those scenes, and it was it was such a dream project to to work on. You know, you're you're listening to John Williams music all day long, and okay. just uh, I remember I think one one of the things I uh, I did for that project is that I went through the entire uh, all of the recordings from all of the Star Wars movies. Uh, all, all, I think at the time, eight of them had come out, right? So the, the two, the two sequels had already come out too. So I went through all of the music and I made a catalog of every theme from every character that, that appears in the entire show. And, uh, that was amazing. Like it was, it was an amazing bunch of weeks, just kind of listening to the, to that music and then putting those themes down. I remember I was so immersed in that, in that world that I, I would come home after work and just watch the Star Wars movies again. Um, it, it like it was just a it was just a, a a season of complete immersion into that world, which I I already had a deep love for, and then I got the chance to sort of dive in there again, and it sort of renewed my love for Star Wars. So that's that was that was a fascinating and and wonderful project to be a part of. Was there a particular, a particular score that um, or an episode, maybe a character there that um, you're particularly fond of? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, so I, I've always loved the, the Yoda, the theme for Yoda. Uh, I think it's kind of an underrated theme. You know, people, of course, uh, the force theme is a very prominent theme and we're always very, uh, that's one we always remember well, the main theme and so on. But there was a, there were a few episodes, if I remember correctly, that were about Yoda and, and we got to put Yoda's theme in there. And, I, I just think that's such a fun kind of whimsical and and quirky theme. And Yoda, of course, is is such an interesting character because he has this kind of quirky side to him, but he's also, you know, a a legendary Jedi master. And so I I loved that juxtaposition. So all the all the Yoda episodes to me were were some of my favorites to work on. Um, the other Star Wars project you worked on, completely different uh, medium altogether, um, was uh, Millennium Falcon. Smuggler's Run ride for um, uh, the Disney's Galaxy's Edge um, theme park experience. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your work on that and uh, yeah. and how you're involved in the project and the creative process for that? Definitely, definitely. So, so that that project I worked on very early on when I first when I first kind of started working in the industry, um, I was working in a in a team of of sound. Uh, editors uh, called Hexany Audio. So, so they're they're a they're a studio here in LA that they they create music and sound for for video games and for theme parks and so on. So I was part of that team uh, back in that time, and they were involved in this project. I think if I remember correctly, most most of what we were doing was was in relationship to the sound um, and the way that the sound was going to be implemented and and you know all of the different uh, not, not the musical aspects but the sound aspects. And it was it was tons of fun. It was like it was such a it was such an interesting project to work on because you got to see all of the behind the scenes of of how how the Disney theme parks were putting that experience together. I remember we got to we got we even got to go to the to the Star Wars Land Park before it was built. So we we got to see the construction site and we got to see um, what the what the experience was going to be like and so on. So that was that was a lot of fun because we got to we got to kind of see it all before before it it became public, and it was it was also you know it was a fascinating project. A lot of very interesting technology was being used to just um, make sure that the experience was immersive and that it was really exciting for for the the people who were gonna you know uh, uh, be a part of it and so on. It was really fun. It was a really fun project. 
I don't think there'd been anything certainly to the kind of scale like that kind of immersive experience before. So yeah. it's in terms of the music and try, trying to keep people engaged and, and immersed in where they are. Um, whilst also, I guess, you're you're adjusting things because you're accounting for people, the fact that people are going to be waiting in queues and um, mm -hmm. moving through the experience and that as well, that um, it, it's, it's, it must have been difficult to find a right balance in terms of um, what music we're and, and as you said, said um, how the sound works. Yeah, and and in the in in the parks themselves, uh, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to go to the to the to the Star Wars land here in in LA, um, but there there is a huge amount of of work that goes into you know the the music that's playing in all of the areas of the park, and so you know I we weren't involved with all of that. There's there's tons of other amazingly talented creative people that are creating new music and and creating sounds and creating all sorts of things so that the the so that that area of the theme park is as immersive as possible and it really really shows i remember after after being done with the project i came to the disney parks just you know to as a as a as a, an audience member um and i remember walking into the star wars land uh section of the park and it's completely immersive it's amazing you know as soon as you there's this very long pathway that that will take you into the, the the that area of the park, and as soon as you begin to approach Star Wars Land, you start hearing very familiar Star Wars sounds. You know the sounds of the blasters and 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 of the all, all the various ships and so on. And then you start hearing Star Wars music, and it just kind of slowly, you know, immerses you into this kind of magical fantasy experience. It's really really awesome. So I, um, it's all very impressive how they put all that together. And uh, what's next for you? Um, have you got projects on the horizon you can talk about? Or um, is there goals? Is there particular types of projects you'd like to be involved in and working on? Thank you for asking that. Um, so I just finished working on another project with, with, uh, with my dear friend, Ryan Shore. Uh, it's a, it's a, a movie called Zombie Town, so that should be a pretty fun, uh, light-hearted sort of zombie comedy movie. Uh, I think that that comes out in October. I, I, I believe it's going to have a theatrical release. Um, so I wrote additional music for that project. And uh, beyond that, I have I have a few things in the works that are not completely confirmed yet. So I don't want to I don't want to jinx it at the moment. But there's there's there might be a documentary project coming uh, in a few months, and then uh, there's a there's a fantasy project that that is in the works that I might be involved with. Uh, that uh, if it comes to fruition, maybe I'll come back and talk about it. But uh, that you know, and and it's it's you mentioned about uh, or you asked about kinds of projects. I'm a I'm a huge fan of this kind of fantasy action adventure genre. And it's been it's been really fun to be to get to work on so many of those projects lately, and that's kind of a direction that I can see myself going creatively. I really like sort of the the creative opportunity that you can get to you know working on things like that. So, so hopefully more of those in the future. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, and talking about your career today and your work on Star Wars projects. It's been fascinating um, hearing hearing all about it and. Uh, Appreciate you joining us on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.